Good morning. I'm attorney Ben Crump, along with my law partner, attorney Natalie Jackson. We're here on behalf of the family of Derek Diaz, who, as you all know, was killed by a police officer with the Orlando Police Department on July 3rd in the wee hours of the morning. The family doesn't know anything beyond that, and it is heartbreaking. They don't know where he was shot at. His mother cries and asks, how many times did they shoot my baby? It was her firstborn. His brother had texted him just a few hours earlier asking him to bring cookies home to him, his 15-year-old brother, Jordan. You're going to hear from his mother, Janera Diaz. You're going to hear from the mother of his five-year-old daughter, Sanji Novi. You'll hear from other members of his family. But they have the one burning question is, what happened to Derek Diaz? They want the truth. They have a right to know the truth. We're here making a, an appeal for transparency. The Wanda Gilzer uh, activist here has been talking to our legal team and the family about this is a pattern with the Orlando Police Department to not be transparent when they kill a person of color and they try to sweep it under the rug. Well, we're not going to let you sweep the killing of Derek Diaz under the rug. I never understand why when the taxpayers pay all of this money for body cam videos for this very instant, for this very instant, to be able to see what happened, why police come up with so many excuses and why we accept them. When we all know the very purpose we have body cam videos is for transparency. You in the media know that. That's what it's about. Everybody being able to see what happened. So we can determine whether the police were justified or not justified in taking a human life. I mean, it, it, it's infuriating when we look at families and they say, why can't we see what happened to our loved one? And they come up with arbitrary reasons to delay, delay, delay. What is it? They're trying to get, us, get their story right? What, why do we have delay? The video is going to be the same no matter what. So release the video. It is, it's not a hard demand that this family is asking. They're asking what any family would be asking if that was their loved one. Wouldn't you all be asking, show me what happened to my child if the police killed your child? That's what Janetta Diaz is asking. She just wants to see why did you kill my son? I know one thing, if roles are reversed, the police release video quick. When they have a person from the community doing something that's questionable, they will release that video. The only time they won't release videos is when it's them who are doing something questionable. And then they come up with all these excuses. And we're tired of the excuses. I, I think that his mother and his family 
asked Attorney Jackson and I the one question. When will they let us see the video? We want to see the video before his funeral. We want to try to answer the questions of his daughter and the other young people in the family. And so we say to the Orlando Police Department, release the video. Very air video, I think is what they told me. Yeah. 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 Video. Release the 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 video. And we want to say it so everybody will understand. Release the video. Let them know the truth. Everybody deserves to know the truth. If you have nothing to hide, release the video. You're going to hear from Attorney Natalie Jackson. Uh, and then after you hear from Attorney Jackson, you're going to hear from his family members. Attorney Jackson is uh, one of the best lawyers in America, and she hails right here from Central Florida, and she has a storied history in fighting for the civil rights of all people. Attorney Natalie Jackson. I will be brief. Um, we have a history of working with cases with Orlando Police Department, especially these type of shootings. What we normally see is a redacted police report, and I'm sure you as media, that's what you see also. However, in instances like this where a family's loved one has died, it is only a matter of justice to tell the family what happened. So in many cases, we've been able to, with working with Attorney Kraut, we've been able to allow the family to see the video with the police department, even if they don't want to release it to the public yet. We demand transparency for the public because that's what Florida Sunshine Laws are about. However, the family at least deserves to know. They, they deserve to see the police report. They deserve to see the video. This is a family that does not know anything about what happened except for what was reported in the media. And as we know, what was reported in the media was a distortion of the facts just by the contradiction of what was said. For instance, it was said that he was reaching for a gun. However, there was no weapon found. So those are the, those are the things that the family is hearing, and that's the questionable things that we're hearing from the police department. So instead of telling us what you think we should know or what you think we should view the evidence as, release the video. Release Let the this video. family see it. Release the video. Release the video. Let this family see what is going on before they put their loved one to rest. Thank you, Lawyer Trump. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Jackson. And we would like to thank Attorney Alicia Adamson for allowing Derek Diaz family to have this press conference in their office. Uh, right now, more than ever, we need people in the community to stand up with Derek Diaz family to get to the truth. Because, but by the grace of God, it can be your loved one next. And you would want somebody to stand with you and say, help us to find the truth of what really happened. We know there was no weapon by their own admission, so what other ways are they going to try to justify this killing? We don't need to hear your words. You don't need to say no more. Just show the video. 
uh, Miss Janera Diaz is going to speak from the heart to you all. I'm Janetty Diaz. I'm the, mo the mother of David Diaz. I want to know what happened. We have the right to know. And, and you're going to hear from the mother of his five-year-old daughter, Sanja Novera. Um, Sanja Nava, my daughter, she keeps asking for her dad. And um, I don't know what to tell her. We just want answers. To, to Corey? I'm Derek's significant other of two and a half years. You guys failed a mom. You guys failed another girlfriend. And most importantly, you failed his daughter. He had the rest of his life ahead of him. He had plans, and you took it from him. And no answers are being given to us. And we need it. It's not fair. We can't eat. We can't sleep. It's not fair. Thank you. Um, you know, his mother and their family talk about how Derek had just finished HVAC school, how he was doing things to try to make I'm sure. Those yeah, how they were doing things positive to try to be a good father for his daughter. Um, and it's just so painful to their family. Um, the last person you will hear from is Lawanza Galza, who is a community activist who has long tried to get transparency from the Orlando Police Department to talk to you briefly about the history of trying to make Orlando Police Department be transparent. Hello, my name is Luana Gelzer, and I'm a community activist here in Orlando, but Central Florida. The simple fact is there's a history of a pattern when it comes to Orlando Police Department. At any particular time, they're number one or two in the country for excessive force. They are, by population, um, fortunately killing loved ones of ours. But the problem is, is they will take forever and hide behind it's an FDLE issue. We've released a video to them. And most often, the family don't see it for over a year. And all decisions have been made. So prior to doing it, release the video. But if we learn from uh, the past, these are just some of the people that have lost their lives to Orlando Police Department in the past that I had relationship with. It's not all of them. This is just some of them. This young man literally was killed down the street in a church. They shot through a window and killed him. No charges. We can go on and on, chased into a lake, no answers. Bree Love, Natalie, you worked on that case. How many times? It was Orange County. But what I'm saying is in Central Florida, we have a history of withholding information. So if in the essence of equity, in the essence of fairness, release the video to the family. We don't want to wait another year, past a year, and then you think we've forgotten. We will not forget. We will continue to say everyone's name and hold you accountable. Thank you. Thank you, Lawanda. So at this time, we will try to take some of your questions, if you have any. Attorney Tom, is there a long, longer plan to perhaps a lawsuit, or are you asking for charges for the officer? What are you all calling for long term? Well, we want to know what happened. We don't want to do what they do so often to young men of color, whether they're black or brown, and have a rush to judgment. We want to see what happened, and we believe in due process. We believe in trying to be fair. We just want them to have due process when they engage our uh, citizens in our community, our brothers and our sisters. Derek needed to have people give him the benefit of consideration. And so that's what we're here being as 
simple as possible. All we want is transparency. So does permitless carry kind of give police a get out of jail card because now they can say they're extra jittery because anybody can be carrying a gun? You know, it, it sets a bad precedent when you have police officers being justified in shooting first and asking questions later. We want to see the video because we want to hold police officers accountable if they kill people unjustifiably. So preferably, not even hopefully, preferably, it can prevent your loved one from being killed unnecessarily and unjustifiably by the police. That's all we're asking. We're not trying to attack police or do anything like that. This family only wants to know the truth. Is that so much to ask Orlando police? For the family and your citizens to see the truth. At this time, no, um, we were told by police that no gun was recovered on the scene. What do you make of that? Well, it tells us a lot because as Attorney Jackson said, the police said they thought he was reaching for a weapon. You know how many times we hear that excuse when they kill black and brown people? I mean, it's such a cliche. Why don't we try hard not to shoot? You know, why don't we try hard to have a respect for life, a value for life? regardless of the color of the skin of that person. And so it tells us when there was no gun found that we really need to see the video. Attorney Crum, do you have any idea or does the family know what Derek Diaz was doing at that time? Monday morning when they found him, what was he in that area? Well, he's a citizen. I think anybody can be anywhere and they want in Orlando. We, we, we don't want to start them saying that we got to have papers to show uh, our existence in a city for which we live. What's your reaction to the police saying that that area was a drug infested? They try to say that about every minority community in America. And, and the one, I'm sure they say that in Orlando oh, yeah. all the time. I know in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, and we have a matter where, you know, Tyree Nichols, in Raleigh, North Carolina, where they said it's proactive policing. We can just violate the Fourth Amendment rights against unlawful searches and seizures because we have claimed that it's a high crime area. And oh, what a coincidence. Every black community, every Hispanic community happens to be the high crime communities that we're just going to violate the constitutional rights. Whatever you do for any other part of Orlando, then you need to do it for every part of Orlando. And Derek Diaz had every right, just as any other citizen in Orlando, to have his constitutional rights respected. So we reject this notion that you get to violate the constitutional rights because you say somebody fit a profile. Well, probably the majority of America fit profiles now. Absolutely. Attorney Crump, Curtis McLeod, Community 13. I know that you've been here for multiple years for these situations with black and brown people. The police chief in Orlando is a black man. If you could speak with him, what would you say to him about this situation and others? What I would say to any police chief, transparency. Show the video. Release the video. Release the video. I say this to so many police chiefs across America. The issue is mistrust between communities of color and law enforcement. And the only way we can bridge that mistrust is to be, number one, transparent. We got to show everybody what happened. Everybody got to see it. And then once we see it, we have to have accountability on either side. And that's how we can get to trust, because we can get to justice as long as we got transparency plus accountability, then we can have trust. We don't want to have it, you know, 
whether it's to Orlando's police chief or Memphis police chief or Minneapolis police chief. We don't want to have it when somebody in our community is accused of something and you don't have video or anything. You throw the book at us. But then when you kill us or harm us and we have all the evidence in the world but nothing happens to them. Then we say, that's two justice systems in America. One for white America and another for the rest of us. No, we have to have one justice system for every citizen in the United States of America. And that's what I would tell the police chief of Orlando and tell him, imagine if this was your loved one. Wouldn't you want to see, has his mother heartbreakingly said, we want to know what happened. We have a right to know what happened. That was her child. And it's, it resonates with mothers all across America who, and fathers whose children have been killed by police. And I know a lot of y'all, y'all say, oh, here we go again. You, you can't fathom what it must be like to have your loved one suddenly taken from the face of this earth and you get no answers. As LaWanda said, they wait a year and they try to make everybody forget that your child existed. And then maybe they might release the video. How is that fair? That's not American. That's not what our principles stand for. Our principles are liberty and justice for all. And that means justice for Derek Diaz, too. And that's why we got to see the video. If the police did nothing wrong, then show the video. Release 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 the video. We will keep you all updated. The hope is that when you all talk to the police chief, ask him, wouldn't it go a long way to build community trust if you release that video? One more question just from um, Professor King. How would you describe your son? I know you guys were talking about how he was doing the best he could for his little girl. And, and I'm and he just have, have one daughter or one daughter? Is two. He said two? No, one. It's a little too emotional right now. One daughter, five years old. He was working at, he said, eight Does anybody else want to say something about Derek? Did you want to talk about it? This is Jordan, his brother. My brother was a great person. Um, if you needed anything, if he could give it to you, he would. He was a genuine person. That's good. That's good. Sad. How old are you, Isaac? Fifteen. What's your last name again? Um, Claxton. Um, yes. Was that the last that you talked to him? Yes. That's got to be pretty hard. Thank you all. We'll continue to keep you updated. And please continue to uh, ask questions about Derek Diaz. Let's don't let them sweep this one under the rug. Please. No. No.